Starting then in the probe firm settings, you can see here where we've got the firm settings. On the tab for risks, when you set up your firm template, now that's normally one person in each firm, you can actually choose what your methodology is going to be relating to the minimum sample sizes. Right. So here you can simply go and say for controls, exercise daily or more often, we select 10. From probe side, that is what we've suggested. Just some background, it comes from basically the small the guide on small entity audits. Right, so we didn't just thumb suck a number. Right, so that's where you do those settings. I have then furthermore prepared the file for our use for today already. So I just want to show you a few things. Firstly, in my audit plan and strategy, after going either through my significant risks or going from the um, transact vol sorry, tr transactions and volumes of, tra no, hang on, types and volumes of transactions, and also going through to the control system, asking my questions, etc., I decided that I wanted to test this control. Right. So in my audit plan, I can see there that there's a specific control that all invoices are matched to the delivery note that's signed by the client before they filed. Okay, some background. In this case, the client makes out the invoice immediately before the in items are actually even dispatched. So I've designed my control test, then you can see the control test, select the sample, etc. etc. This flows through to the audit program, okay. and it's the same wording. Select the sample of recorded invoices, etc., etc. So what I now have to go and do is I actually have to go and set up this control test worksheet. So let's see. When I go in my in my case web index, you know, if I go scroll down very very far, I will see under section 90, that's the same part as the lead schedules etc where your audit programs are, in section 90 I will see this control testing worksheet. In terms of versions, this was only made available from version 2010.05 if I'm correct. If you didn't have 2010.05, definitely it will be included in 2010.07 and of course going forward as well with the November 28 release as well, 2010.08 release as well. Okay, so the control test worksheet is there. You are probably quite familiar with copying that template. Paste it in the section where you are, and then I've also indicated there that you must please remember to change the document properties. Okay, because as long as it says 90, it will only read as a template. So for our purpose, we're going to be working in revenue, and for that then, I've changed the properties to make the number 60, 60 point, and you can make, make, make it whatever at the end. And that brings us to the worksheet then. Once I've changed the settings, I can then start working in the worksheet. Right, so let me just activate my caseware file quickly. There you go. Okay, I want to just increase the size. I don't know if you would prefer that. I certainly do. What you would find here then is basically the planning document, the calculating the sample, the sheet where you do your work, everything that you need to do in one sheet. So it basically replaces your Excel worksheet. You no longer need an Excel worksheet. Okay, let's just go through this quickly. 1A, describe the test to be performed. That simply comes from your audit program step. In fact, I could have gone and made a reference here to 60.10, the revenue work program. Okay, then you could also put it there, but I prefer to actually have the program step there, then I can see for myself when I've got to go on. Also note the A and the B because we're going to actually use that part later on. Describe the population, well there you simply go and describe it, describe the control, that's of course the control activity. Now this part then drives, the one that says how often is the control exercise, that drives the control test sample already. Right, I want to indicate to you quickly um, Oh, it's too big now. I want to just show you. You can see that at the top is the menu. It says at least once daily, and at the moment the 10 is showing. If I go and select, let's say, quarterly, you will notice that immediately after saying the control is performed quarterly, now suddenly the control sample or the control test sample is only two. 
All right, so that already is a driving force in this whole thing. I'm going to make it at least once daily. You select the assertions, again, coming from the audit program step. And secondly, also, um, well, driving the risk assessments, again, pulling through. You will notice that these ones do not actually work effectively if you have not changed the properties. So that's why we have to change the properties to tell this worksheet it's now talking to the revenue section. The rest of the items, the unit that will be tested, this is all from, from selections, etc. So that's, that's quite um, important then to just document to see what it is that we are going to do. Describe how completeness of the population has been considered. Okay, you have to, before you do a selection, you have to check that, that all the items that should be in the bowl is in the bowl before you start making the sele selections. Describe what will be considered a misstatement, of course, again, guiding the person doing the control test. Right, now, in terms of this worksheet itself, the risks now. Pull through from your risk assessment, from your 12, 20, your audit plan, etc., where you said, what is your risk of material misstatement? In this case, for this file, it's medium for both EO and VA. Then it asks you your expected assurance. This is merely to help you to think about the matter. So what is the expected assurance from, and these are the other procedures we chose to do, significant risk responses, required procedures, and then, of course, the last part that I was doing is my control test, so, so that's not in there. In terms of significant risk responses, in this specific case, I was really only getting evidence for VA. Required procedures, I said, I expect to have high assurance. I don't even have to have done it. Eh? It's just expected. And then this is the second driving force in my sample size, assurance required from tests of controls. If I require a medium assurance, my sample size in this case, because of those firm settings that we had right at the beginning, is 10. The moment that I want to make either of these high, high assurance, in other words, lots of or strong evidence, I will be selecting 30 items and no longer only 10 items. Okay, so that's the main thing here. If I chose in my firm settings to make the minimum sample size 20 maybe, that 20 would then have pulled through here because of my firm settings. I've got a question here in terms of what is the significance of how often the control is performed and, and why that drives the part before. So if I can just go back a little bit. Um, when we select items purely from, just, just from a standard or a flat rate basis, many firms have a, a policy where they just always choose 20 or always choose 25. Now that is fine if you've got a control that is performed often. But what do you do if you've got a control that's only performed once a year? Well, that's probably the obvious example because then you test that one. But what about something that's performed monthly? The bank reconciliation, they've only got one bank. They do the bank reconciliation once a year and they review it once a year. Okay, so you can't then test 20 because there are only 12, or you can't test 30, there are only 12. And that then drives um, the smaller the sample size, then, then testing less. It's not because you, you're getting less evidence, it's just because the population from which you're selecting is smaller. Right, then just coming back to the sample size, we've then got the 10. We go to the selection method, and here from the standards, etc., you've got your options. Random selection, systematic selection, monetary unit, haphazard. In terms of the template itself, just to let you know, random selection will simply give you 10 blocks and you can put in your own details. Systematic selection will do a systematic calculation and give you the answers. All you need to do is tell, them, tell the software your random starting point. Monetary unit sampling is there as an option, but it's not really appropriate for control testing, so try and stay away from that. It does, however, work in very much the same way as systematic selection. Okay, so it's, it's an option, but I would prefer systematic. And then haphazard, again, where you have to actually put the stuff in there yourself. So what I mean by that is with, with the random selection, it's always very confusing. The, the standards actually say random selection is literally where you use a random generator. Okay, but both of those will have blank spots in the actual um, spreadsheet. I've however, already completed the matters. In terms of systematic selection, telling myself the first item is double one double one and in the next one three two one zero it calculates and all I have to then still insert is to tell it where do I want to start in the first interval 
and I've just chosen 1115. Automatically then when I go to the control test worksheet or to the control, test of control sheet, I will then get my numbers generated. These ones on the left hand side were generated completely automatically. That's what's so exciting to me. In other cases, let's say if it was debtors, I might have wanted to actually put the debtors name here, but it's not really necessary in this case because I've got the numbers. It's quite, quite useful. Further, if you want to test a control or test various controls maybe, you are able to select as many as 10 little columns, similar to the ones of ABC for testing the controls. If you want to test only one or two columns, that's up to you. You will see here that I've selected three just for, for explanatory purposes. Alright, so you can choose how many columns you want. You will notice that in column A, I have an assurance level right at the bottom indicated as medium. That's what we said we wanted. We said we want medium assurance, we've tested all of, ten, all of them is fine, we still have the medium assurance. However then, as soon as I have one or more errors, you will see that it then automatically changes to low assurance. Okay. You could change it if you want to. From the methodology side, the moment if you test 10 only, the moment you have one error, you either can't rely on this, this test or you have to increase your sample size. Okay. How do I increase my sample size? At this stage, there isn't a little button here or something to say, ooh, increase my sample size. What you would effectively have to do is to simply make sure that you can maintain all the information. Go back then and say, okay, I've got one error. I would like to test another 20, if that's your decision, and then make it basically 30 items knowing that you've already got one error, so you will end up with medium assurance. To the right then, you've got the column for nature, cause and effect of misstatements. Remember there to put in information as to what's happening. Why is this an error? Um, the ABC that I put in here comes from the audit program step on the summary schedule. So, so if you've got that step in there, you can see that if I put a cross next to B, well then clearly there wasn't a signature on the, on the order, or whatever that B step indicates. Okay, but it's still important to maybe just document it towards the right hand side. If I've got somewhere else that I want to actually reference the work to, I've got the option either within case where or I can simply type it in there. Um, but I do think that this working paper should be sufficient so you may not even need to use that reference code. After performing this test then you go back to the summary sheet right at the bottom where you've got your conclusion. And that is then where you would like to say stuff like, um, you know, based on the procedures performed, from the results that we have, we can place medium assurance or high assurance or no assurance on this procedure. And that's it. I think it's very useful. Um, I think it's very user-friendly. It, it really is just to understand what each of the blocks are for.